Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. The silent picture era. A time in cinema that the acting looks very ridiculous. We'll put it that way. It, I mean, like, look at this stuff. It's kind of ridiculous. But the way the actors convey the characters' stories is still captivating. There are many actors that we don't know about because silent pictures are not very interesting to us in this day and age. Plus, silent pictures began in 1833. Yeah, long time ago. I mean, this was the first silent picture ever done. It's gone from this to Avatar. <laughs> Come a long way in over... Almost 150 plus years. We've come a long way. Throughout this era, there are many big and lesser known actors and actresses that have fascinating the American dream stories. Myrtle Gonzalez has a short but nonetheless great story. Let's get started. Myrtle Gonzalez was born on September 28, 1891 in Los Angeles, California. Her parents were Manuel George Gonzalez and Lillian L. Cook. She had two older siblings, Stella M. and Manuel G. Gonzalez Jr. Her father's side of the family was a Hispanic California family from Mexico. Californios is a term used to classify a Hispanic Californian, specifically those descended from Spanish and Mexican settlers through the 17th and 18th centuries. Myrtle's father's family settled on the territory long before the U.S. took it, like many descendants in this country have, but you know, we're just and her mother was the daughter of Irish immigrants. Her father was a retail grocer and her mother was a former opera singer and was very popular. Myrtle inherited her mother's desire to be on stage and remarkable talents. From a young age, she displayed great dramatic acting talent and had, according to her mom, a good soprano voice. If you remember from Julie Daubigny, a soprano is a female opera singer with the highest vocal range of all voice types. With her vocal talents, Myrtle sang in local concerts, benefits, and in church choirs as a child. In her teenage years, she, I went through puberty. In her teenage years, she played teenage parts in plays on stage with stage actresses like Fanny Davenport and Florence Stone. In 1910, when Myrtle was 19, she met and married silent film actor James Parks Jones. They had their only son, James Parks Jones Jr. in 1911. Say that five times. James Parks Jones Jr. James Parks Jones Jr. <laughs> About a year after their son was born, Myrtle and James divorced. Quick side history lesson. In the early 1900s, movie studios started moving from New York City to Los Angeles. There were many reasons for this massive shift, but one reason was for lighting. Stay with me here. Now, electric lighting was widely available in New York City. However, none were powerful enough to illuminate a studio for the cameras. I mean, like, look at these things. Like, these, these cameras are so big, you need to put them in what we would do with a checked bag. They need to be in suitcases that big. And if you watch silent film pictures, it's the, the amount of lighting, I can't imagine the amount of lighting it takes to get through the lens, to get the image and the lighting. It to, what a nightmare with cameras. Like we think that lighting now is hard enough. Imagine doing lighting with this thing. A ring light's not gonna cut it. <laughs> So the second best option was natural lighting. And needless to say, New York City doesn't have many options for natural sunlight because, you know, buildings, <laughs> really tall buildings at that. So California was perfect. Some movies were shot only on rooftops in downtown Los Angeles at the time. This massive shift was also due to the fact that the giant movie company founded by Thomas Edison called Motion Picture Patents Company controlled essentially all the patents related to movie production. And I'm pretty sure 
I don't need to say this, but I'm going to because this man really gets my gears going. Oh, this, this, this guy. Oh, he's a douche. I do not like Thomas Edison. And we all know that Thomas Edison was essentially a fake it till you make it guy, right? Like he didn't invent the freaking, what's it called? Camera. He didn't invent the movie camera. We all know that, right? He stole it from somebody. No, oh, I don't like that guy. So the independent filmmakers moved to LA, which A, was pretty far away from Edison's home base in New Jersey, and B, was kind of a to him, and C, it made it harder for him to enforce his ridiculous patent requirements. These rules are ludicrous. Again, this guy's a douche. Anyway. Plus, with LA being sunny all year round, movies could be made all year round. This massive shift would be the foundation for what would become modern day Hollywood. So with all these movie studios moving to Myrtle's backyard, she must have been like, let's freaking go. Let's freaking go. I love stage, but let's go into the movies. Myrtle joined the silent motion picture studio Vitagraph Company of America, where she got her first role in 1913 in the silent film, The Yellow Streak, about a 14 minute movie. 14 minute movie. Like we know that Pixar shorts are movies in and of itself. We all, we all get that. This was an average length film for a movie, was 14 to 15, 20 minutes. That was a movie. And we've gone from 14 minute movies to three and a half hour long Avatar 2 movies. Again, perspective here, like, yeah, we've come a long way. <laughs> From that movie on, Myrtle gained a reputation for being able to play bold, outdoorsy heroines as a counterpoint to city girls. Though her roles were specific, Myrtle got praise for playing strong women who overcame hardships with strength and determination. With Myrtle playing more outdoorsy roles, she had to adapt to filming in different and often treacherous climates. During her time with Vitagraph, she starred beside William Desmond Taylor in five movies between 1913 and 1914. They starred in the 1913 comedy drama, Her Husband's Friend, which I read the synopsis for that while doing this research. It's different. You know what? Given, given the synopsis for movies these days, I'm just saying, emoji movie. <laughs> I hate that movie. <laughs> the 1914 comedy Millions for Defense, and the 1914 dramas Tainted Money, The Kiss, and Captain Alvarez. On November 23rd, 1914, Myrtle's best known film role in the 14 minute silent movie The Level was released, and this pushed her into stardom. Myrtle continued to star in Vitagraph films such as The Little Sheriff in 1914 and The Chalice of Courage in 1915. Both pushed her farther into stardom. With Chalice of Courage, that's a really cool name. I'm just saying. She worked with Vitagraph till 1915 when she totally scored a deal to work for Universal. Oh, and we all love Universal. And may I just say, the logo of the Earth thing, it goes way far back. And it's still the little globe and the little, um, what are those called? Rings around the Earth. Oh, it's hard for my brain today. While working for Universal, Myrtle starred in many classic films, such as in 1916, It Happened in Honolulu, The Secret of the Swamp, The Girl of the Lost Lake, and The End of the Rainbow. In 1917 alone, she starred in The Greater Law, Southern Justice, Mutiny, and The God's Crucible. All these films further cemented her outdoorsy heroine status and fame. Her last silent film appearance was in the 1917 film, The Showdown, because in that same year, on December 1st of 1917, she married actor, director, and army officer, Alan Watts in LA. Myrtle met Alan when he was working at Universal as an assistant director. And after the marriage, Myrtle decided to retire. She was 26 at that time. At the time of their marriage, the U.S. entered World War I, and Allen, being an officer, became stationed at Camp Lewis near Tacoma, Washington. 
And of course, Myrtle followed her husband. However, the climate of Tacoma was too hard for her because her health was too frail to adapt. Her husband, seeing his wife suffering, actually put himself on the retirement list so he could move her back to Southern California for her health. They ultimately would move back to California and Alan went back to work for Universal and began directing movies. Their marriage and Myrtle's life was unfortunately cut short when in October of 1918, Myrtle contracted a heart condition and passed away from the Spanish flu during the worldwide 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. At the time of her death, she was at her parents' house in Los Angeles. She was only 27. Though most of her films have been lost, the Library of Congress has been able to preserve several of her films. Though her life was brief, Myrtle amazed many with her talents, and in her four-year film career, she was in a total of 80 silent movies and is remembered as Hollywood's first Latin and Hispanic film star. All right, boom, there you go. Short, sweet, to the point, but nonetheless, her story deserves to be told because, at least for me being a film junkie, love learning about any new unknown actresses, and especially in the silent film era, because that's an era of fascination to me. If you learned something today, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel, and while you're down there, please leave a friendly comment. I will be back next week with another video, and until then, don't be well behaved. You just might make her story. See you next time, guys.